So, oh, I have to start this one, don't I? <laughs> Hi guys, so I am here today with Sana. Hello. From Books and Quills, who you might know. Um, and we thought we would talk about master's degrees yes. because we've both done them. So we're qualified to talk get, about this. I get a lot of emails. <laughs> yeah, from exactly. Being like, ah, oh, help! I want to study in the Netherlands. I don't understand how anything works. Yeah, I actually did consider applying to Leiden um, for my masters, but then I realised I didn't have enough money to leave oh, home, yeah. so I had to stay home. <laughs> so we just, I just wanted to like do a really like basic chat. Like, if you've got any more complicated questions that you want to ask down there, please, please do. Like, I'll be more than happy to answer them. And I also have a video just generally on university, which might be of use for mm -hmm. undergrad. If you're like an undergrad, you can go check out. I've got one as well. Have I've you? got a um what's Actually, it like studying that. yeah it's like what it's like studying English literature yes at Leiden University and then I have one that's specifically about what it's like to study translation for your masters. Okay oh well, so that's, that's fantastic. Really so yeah we've detailed. got like a few different uni videos down below that you can go and check out but this is for those of you that are considering applying for a masters and just want some kind of like tips and like whether you think it's worth it and things mm. like that. So well, you did your masters in Scotland right? Yes I went to Edinburgh University to do my masters which was an MA MSc in classics. Okay. A Masters of Science. Like, that's one of the things I must say. Like, it, it, the titles are so meaningless. Like, things like, depends where you go, you can get MAs, MLETs, MSCs, huh. M, MRESs, although that does mean you d stayed there for two years and did research. But, I mean, the difference between an MA, an MLET, and then like, MSc is is negligible, like it's nothing. Mm, so like, I think I have an MA. Yeah, technically. Probably. I think yeah. most places do that. Like yeah. I know when I was looking at like Oxford and stuff, it was MAs. Um, I know. Am I a master of the arts? Yes. I'm a master of, I'm a master of science somehow. <laughs> That's hilarious because we studied something so close to yeah, each other it's and like, it's so completely it's different. Not particularly scientific. It's just. It's just the way they do it at Edinburgh and that's the thing. So if you are applying to like universities and that's something that's disorientating you, don't worry about it. Like literally just don't worry about it. It's all the same. <laughs> so I did I did a weird thing because I wanted to do my masters in translation at Leiden University, which is where I did my undergrad mm -hmm. as well, where I did um, English lit and I wasn't paying attention, I was an idiot, and I thought you could do some translation courses, mm. some lit courses, okay. and then just end up with kind like of, an English master's. Yeah, kind of like undergrads. Um, and so, while during the summer holidays I was signing up for those courses, so I'd already said I'm going to yeah. do that English master's in the English department. Yeah. I was trying to sign up for the courses, turns out, first of all, all the translation ones were already full. Oh my god. And second, because I was like on holiday and I missed a letter, I think I'm yeah. just being an idiot. And um, then it also turned out that you can't do it halfway, you have to pick one. And so I was like, alright, I kind of want to do translation yeah. instead of literature, but they're full. And because um, university only costs, it's like a hundred, no, it's um, 1700 euros yeah, it's per year in the Netherlands, I thought. I'd, I've done ever. I haven't taken a gap year, yeah. and everything straight through. How about if I just do a year of English Lit? Yep. And then I'll take a year of translation, yeah. and then I'll see what I want to write my dissertation on. That's quite a good idea, and like that is a that is one of the things to consider. Like obviously, costs with masters, and it so varies. Oh, yeah. That is definitely the like the that we're, is, on the we're on the cheaper end. Yeah, the European universities and. These are good universities, it's not like a cost equals like standard yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, it just depends on the countries because I think the Dutch government does a lot to like help out Subsidizing, students yeah. with loans and stuff. Yeah. Um, but then it might be more expensive if you're a student studying abroad in the Netherlands. I think it's okay though if you're from the EU because when okay. I looked up Leiden it was the same for me, like okay. it would say it would have cost that much. Um, whereas like what was really lucky for me in my undergrad is that if you're Scottish and go to a Scottish university, you don't pay anything for your undergrad. That's amazing. But I did have to pay for my postgrad, and it was like seven thousand pounds, and that's why I had to move home. And, and so like, you did one year. Yeah, it was only a year. Um, obviously a lot of money, and I know people that took like three years out before doing their masters to save up. Like you know, if you want this, there's nothing wrong with going and working in like retail for three years or like two years. Yeah, I lived at home, but so that I could afford it because yeah. like I couldn't have rented a flat as well. <laughs> I always lived at home during my whole university yeah. career because um, it's one of the things where in the Netherlands there aren't sort of one university isn't better than the other one. Yeah. There's like five or six big ones and they're all sort of equal and the mm -hmm. way to get into it is just you sign up and yeah. they test for undergrad is if you can make it through the first year getting enough points you get to stay. Okay. If not they just tell you you have to leave and go but you can then try yeah. another track. Yeah. Um, and so that's the weird thing like so there's no qualifications you need except for graduating high yeah. school for most of them. Yeah. And um, 
So I just picked a university that was in a city that was close to my hometown, but to be honest, I hadn't even been there that much. Yeah. It wasn't that adventurous. Um, and one of my high school teachers was telling us all, like, no, you have to go across the country. You have to go study as far away as possible. And I just wasn't, I wasn't that person at that point. No. I did end up studying abroad in the end, but I was like, I can live at home. I lived at home for five years while I was at yeah. university and I saved so much money. People, like, I know this is like, this is in regard to undergrad and postgrad, but people can be really negative about staying at home mm -hmm. um, for like your studies. Usually those people have no idea. Like I found like when I, I decided, cause I, I did my undergrad at Edinburgh as well and decided to live the first year at home rather than going and seeing student halls in the same city that I lived yeah. in and um, so many of my friends in high school were going to be why are you doing that like you won't meet anybody you won't make friends I was like I was fine <laughs> like honestly I did move yeah. out for three years mm -hmm. before I moved back but there is nothing wrong with staying at home I, like the point is if if your focus is on getting the degree and not on moving, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. Stay at home, save your money. I have to say that all most of my friends went to the same university to study something differently. We wouldn't see each other at yeah. university because they were all different buildings. Mm -hmm. But we all stayed in the same town, and yeah. my my hometown has a tendency of people like to stay there forever. Yeah. Um, but we like I had my friends in my hometown, and mm -hmm. the latest bus from my university city to my hometown was at like eleven thirty at night. Yeah. So I did stay over for parties at like friends' houses mm -hmm. sometimes. So I got to experience a little bit of their university yeah. life by staying over at their places. But yeah, most of the time I just sort of hung out with my friends at home, and I had friends at university that I saw at university. Yeah. And we went out and stuff like yeah. that. But I d yeah, I don't feel like I missed out on a lot. Like I don't think. So I feel like I spent the money that I saved, I yeah. spent it on travelling yeah. for my university career. And so. like, I, I always feel like university is an amazing social experience, like so many of my good friends now are people I met at university, but like that doesn't like take over from the educational side and I think you'll know that if you're considering doing a masters and that is one of the things I want to say, like you know you might have to kind of cut down on the socialising for a year. Mm. Like I feel like, like lots, it's an, like I find it a very intense experience because I mean your undergrad's three or four years, was your three? Um, yes. Three, yeah, yeah, mine's was four, but like obviously it depends on where you go. Your undergrad's a lot longer. You're having to get a degree in a year this time. Like mm -hmm. it's a lot shorter space of time and you know, you might have to give up like going to the pub three days a week. Like, but I think you, you have to be willing to make those sacrifices mm -hmm. going into it. I'm trying to think about how hard I found it because for the literature course I found it quite similar yeah. except that it was a lot more specific yeah. so instead of picking like the romantics or 18th and 19th century uh -huh. poetry yeah. it was a course on apocalyptic fiction yeah. or a course on we did one, it was like, all the things said influenced <clears throat> the Lord of the Rings. Amazing! It, so it was very, like, it would be a very specific topic, and yeah. it was quite fun to go a little bit more in-depth. That's not that different for me, because I felt like, things like I did a course on Epicurus, who was a Greek philosopher, whereas mm -hmm. in undergrad I'd done a, philo a course entirely on the pre-Socratics, who are mm -hmm. like, a group of like 12 philosophers, so they they, like, they really narrow it down. There's also a lot more emphasis on like self-study. Yeah. And like, um, like I didn't actually have that many classes. Um, oh no, I had, at some point I had like six or eight hours in the week, I think? Yeah, yeah, like it was something very, ridiculous yeah. like that. And I think that most of my class, my classes came from languages, mm -hmm. like I don't know, like with you doing translations as well, it must have been yeah. like a lot of it. So like I spent, like my most in uni hours were sitting in Greek class. Oh, actually no, we didn't oh, because okay. When you're at the point of doing a master's in a certain language, they don't try and teach you the yeah. language anymore. You okay, yeah, yeah. Language down. I think for most cases. So mine was different. It was about the technique and like practicing and like yeah. doing group assignments and stuff. Well, I hadn't done like I'd done a bit of ancient languages outside of university, but I'd never officially done ancient Greek oh, as part yeah. of my degree because mm -hmm. I didn't have to. I was doing classical studies, which meant I could do it all in translation, and I'd never done classics at school, mm -hmm. so I was a lot more comfortable doing that. Um, but then obviously I decided this was my career, I wanted to go into classics, so it's like yeah. you have to learn Latin or ancient Greek. So I, we, they, did, they offered classes specifically for postgrads going into it, mm -hmm. um, which were like proper like hands-on like beginners like courses, and well it depends on your level, they had like yeah. beginners, intermediate, advanced, that kind of thing, which were more traditional language classes. I really felt that out of the two, I didn't like, I keep saying I did two masters, technically I didn't do two, do two but, masters. But like, you experienced the courses of like yeah. two masters. I, 
felt like I got so much more out of the translation ones because it was different from what I did from undergrad. Yeah. So when people ask me, I usually say, unless you have a very straightforward path and you know what you want to do, yeah. you want to go do a PhD in that field, and you know, yeah. I would suggest doing something that is within the same field but like a different branch of yeah. it. Yeah. Because you've already had see some classes in it, probably, but I really enjoyed being like, oh, this is like something completely new that yeah. falls in the same field, but I've never done this before. Yeah. And I enjoyed it so much more, and I had a great time. So, like, I'm really glad I did it because I got to do the language, but my actual, like, in the nicest way possible, my actual history courses and modules, I found quite dull. <laughs> because, like you're saying, mm. it was not new information you, to like, me. You've been doing this for four years. Yeah, it was like, there was people in it who had come from English lit backgrounds who hadn't done like things like ancient history and stuff like that. So for them it was really new. For me, a lot of the information was repetitive. Although, studying it more in depth and in a slightly different way was definitely yeah. helpful. But, but you're so used to like how those classes work. You're like, yeah. yep, I've written an essay like this before. So, We're doing the same thing again. You, and then it's not, I didn't find it like it was on a hugely higher level, like maybe yeah. the expectations were a bit higher. But you can only get to a certain point yeah, when it comes to like there's literature like, classes. There is like a glass ceiling of like kind of like this is the best kind of thing. Like, like, like they can give you more reading and yeah. more essays, but you know. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's, that, and that's where it like comes in again, it's like you've got to be motivated to self-study. Like so most, like what I enjoyed the most about my master's was writing my dissertation because that was a topic I picked. I got to analyse really in depth. We did that for months. Mm -hmm. when, like I, I read loads of books and taught myself stuff and it's like, it's about, one, once you're going into master's research, you know, you don't get molly coddled anymore. Yeah. You like, you have to they do stuff for you yourself. Off, and you, yeah. can, you can go talk to your advisor yeah. if you want to. I'm so bad at talking to advisors. I know. I am the same. Like, you get really nervous in, like, I went in, like, four or five times. I was like, it's all right. I'll just write my dissertation. And then I'll come back and be like, something like this? Like, yeah. I was really bad. I just hate other people seeing my work. I know. But, it like, it makes such a difference. They're not, like, going to say, Here, would you like some help? You have to ask for yeah. it. Which isn't that dissimilar from undergrad, but, like, even just more so, like, on a bigger level. Um, um, the way that we're also different, I think, is that for me, my master's proved that I don't want to go into academia. Yeah. And for you... <laughs> I don't want to leave. Like, I'm about, I'm starting a PhD next year, um, like, that is, but that is, like, important. Like, masters aren't just for academia. Like, masters are useful even if you decide you don't want to go into mm -hmm. academia. Um, but yeah, because yeah. I, because writing my dissertation, I was like, yeah, this is great and all, but... I enjoyed those practical translation lessons a lot more, mm -hmm. and I'd rather do that than write an essay. Yeah, like I'd rather actually translate than write. Yeah, whereas a I text want to research. They they are really valuable, and like I think, but obviously it's not like undergrad in the way that you might just do it for the sake of it. So. It's one of those. I was thinking about obviously you don't have any experience with this yet about how much a master's matters for getting a job. I was hired mostly for what I did in my spare time. Yeah. So like my YouTube skills, like yeah. video editing and social media more than like studying English. Obviously they want you yeah. to have a degree mostly, um, but I think I would have gotten that job without the masters. my masters. Yeah. Um, and I think if I only would have done my literature masters I would have sort of gone, well that was an extra year and it was fun, but yeah. I don't know if that was worth it. Translation though was the thing, like it opened my eyes yeah. to how much I enjoyed translation and how interesting it is. Yeah, they have lots of different uses, because like I know people as well that like came from having done undergrads in very different subjects, because you don't have to do your masters in the same subject, you just have to prove an interest in a mm -hmm. subject. If you're applying for one you just maybe have to say like, look I do stuff in my spare time that's relevant, I've learned these skills from my undergrad even though it doesn't look relevant. Um, who then, it's like a way of finding out if you want to change, mm -hmm. almost, if that makes sense. So it's like you've come from doing, say, like English Lit, and now you think you want to be a historian, so you do a history master's. Um, like, it's, you can't, obviously you can't do an English Lit um, undergrad and then just do a history PhD, or like it's unlikely to get picked up. The master's yeah. is like a way of transferring it. Another thing is as well, like for me, I got a 2-1 in my undergrad. Which is great, like, a 2-1, like, fantastic, like, I'm really happy with that. Um, whereas the masters gave me an opportunity to, like, up my standards and, like, I got, I just got my results and I got, like, <laughs> so, like, I got my distinction and, like, I upped it, I got first class and now for things, like, so, like, obviously my masters is better than my undergrad and it, like, helps me for things like applying for PhDs. It's like, well, look, I am capable of this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. it requires a lot of thought and, like, mm. do you want to do this? Also... Because I did two years of masters, I think after my first year, and I'd already decided I was going to do two years because yeah. of that whole like course thing I explained earlier. 
at the end of my first year of my master's, I was like, I would have not been re I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready yet. Yeah. Um, and then I did my second year, and then by the end of that, yeah. I was like, yes, well, I so am now we, ready. It's funny, though, because we both did, like, five years all together, because I did but four undergrad, did, and then yeah. one, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like we've Quite covered, like, yeah, yeah, that's all, like, the kind of starting stuff that's mm. kind of, like, going in, what to, like, have in your head when you're going into it. Work hard. <laughs> do your reading. Go to the library. Oh my God, yes, like that is the thing. Masters is about like it's not undergrad anymore. Like you have to be driven. Like regardless of what you want to do with your masters, if you're just doing it out of interest, if you're just if you're doing it like a museum degree because mm -hmm. you want that as a yeah. career. Like, like you're gonna have to write the dissertation one way or the other. <laughs> like yeah, nobody's gonna do the work for you. Like yeah. <laughs> But you can do it. Well, hopefully this video was helpful for those of you that are considering starting masters or mm -hmm. trying to apply for masters. Like I said, leave any questions you have in the thingy. I always want to see the description box. Me too. <laughs> in the comments do down it. below, and I'll try and answer those. And yeah, until next time, guys. Happy reading. Bye. Bye. <laughs>